Honestly, <laughs> this is the fifth time trying to record this video today. I am so frustrated and so angry because I'm trying to teach and every single time something happens and I'm just so annoyed. So firstly, I apologize for the sound, I'm using new headphones, I'm trying to get the best sound I can out of this room. Secondly, if I look away from the camera, it's because I'm trying to check my screen recorder, making sure that's fine, because that dropped out on me once. And that being said, thank you for your patience. So right now we're going to jump into Premiere Pro and I have already made loads of like little easy templates for myself. So just bear with me. This isn't going to be a full color grading tutorial. It's just going to kind of give you a quick look at what I do and how I use the Passport Color Checker in post-production. So with that being said, that's what this video is about. It's part two. We're going to do Passport Color Correction Checker. Oh, my brain today is fried. I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. So here's what I've done. I've duplicated this exact same clip four times. The reason being is I just want to show you layer by layer how I go about correcting footage that I've shot in vlog or raw, etc. And this is just a correction. This is not a full-blown color grading uh, tutorial. So over here, this has absolutely nothing in it. Uh, but the second layer, usually I just wanted to explain, usually adjustment layer one and correction one are the same thing when I color grade. But the reason it's not now is because I'm trying to teach you guys how to, how to get this done. So I usually never color grade the clip. I usually always color grade on adjustment layers. And the reason for that is adjustment layers tend to be uh, easier for me to work with mentally and keep track of so that's why I do it and correction one all I did was I adjusted the curves just so I can get the exposure right because here's the thing if your exposure is not correct that will affect the value of the colors inside your shot thus you're not going to be getting the most accurate representation of what it is that you shot so the first thing I would do is I would check and I will almost always correct the saturation, the white balance, and the exposure all on the same layer, starting with the exposure level. So I'm pretty happy with how this is exposed. I think it's done well. I usually try and keep everything here between 10 and 80 range. The reason being is that I find like a lot of colors tend to sit very well in that. Anything above or below that go into the extremes, like the real highlights and the real shadows, and I don't want anything like that going on in my, in my uh, cut my edit. So the first thing I did was I just went here into Lumetri Color. I just gave it a small S curve to bring down the highlights a tiny bit more because the window is overexposed and I don't think it looks pretty good in the shot. So this is just a quick one to kind of balance things out. Now adjustment layer one, as I stated before, I would usually do all of this on one single one, but for right now it's fine. Um, ooh, pardon me. What I'd go into is basic corrections, get this little eyedropper tool, and I would drag it to the middle gray. I would hit that and it will, should, should, come on, yes, give me a different value of white balance. So as you can see, all the colors are jumping around the place, but you want to hit this middle, middle gray, but that's because that will white balance the best. So we are going to use that as our white balance. And as you can see, it only boosted it a tiny bit, but sometimes that tiny bit is all you need. So I might actually just manually adjust it ever so slightly to be slightly warmer. And I'm going to boost the saturation up just a tiny bit so that there's more information in the color. But like, look, this is it. Like, look how easy this is instantly. We went from that to that in just a, the click of a few buttons, not a lot of work at all. Next, what I would do is I would put on an input LUT and an input LUT, which is different than a finishing LUT, is an input LUT takes the corrected color and interprets it in the form of a different camera. So in my particular case, I did it with an Arri Alexa. So it's going to interpret my camera and my footage is going to be interpreted as if it was shot on an Ari Alexa, but it wasn't. So, you know, uh, Adobe have their own little basic LUTs like that, but you can use whatever LUT you want, it's fine. It's just, 
I happen to choose this one. It doesn't really matter in this particular case. But as you can see, this is the with the LUT, this is without the LUT, and see how rich the colors are automatically, especially if we look at the color passport checker. The colors already look pretty, pretty good in my opinion. So with that being said, generally it's always a good idea to change the opacity of that layer or you know, change the intensity of this interpretation of color. So if I did that, that's what it would look like at 100% power and that does not look good <laughs> at all. So I'm actually going to take it down a few uh, notch to about 30, which I think is a really nice resting point for us. And then what I did was I found one of Maddie Hapoya's LUTs that I bought ages ago, and I found it and it's called Cinema. That's the one I'm using. But that also would class more as a finishing LUT. So it gives your footage the look that you're going for, as opposed to interpreting everything in a certain way. So that being said, I changed the intensity because in, the intensity originally is this, which is too harsh in my opinion. Sorry, that's the original intensity, too harsh in my opinion, whereas something around 10% seems to make everything look very natural, very easy. And I'm just gonna show you uh, kind of a quick before and after. So I'm just gonna turn off all these layers. So you can see, this is the original shot we had. I then adjusted the exposure. I then adjusted the saturation and the white balance to give it this look. So now my skin tone looks a bit better. I then did an input LUT so that it looks like Ari cinema footage when it's not. And then just to top it all off, when I'm happy with the colors and how everything is represented, I used a finishing LUT to make it look just a bit better. So that's why we use a color checker, because through every step of the way, this color passport is giving us accurate information on the colors that we're using and the colors we're trying to represent in our film or in our shot or in our studio, because without it, you're really just guesstimating. You're just taking a wild guess of what you think looks right, whereas it might not be the case and that could damage your footage and you don't want that ever. So please, please, please consider buying one or using one because these, once you get used to using tools like this, you can't not use tools like this. It becomes very difficult for you to even wrap your head around how am I meant to manually do this and think about this? And you don't want that. So I hope you found this information useful. I know it was a bit longer a tutorial. I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I will speak to you soon. If you enjoyed everything, please like, subscribe, etc. because I think Sometimes I'm not the worst person to listen to every once in a while. So I will speak to you soon. Best of luck. And I hope you've got something useful out of this video. Bye.